We're going to take a look now at so-called multi-loop circuits. Remember, a circuit is a complete loop through which current can flow. Up until now, the circuits we've investigated have one complete loop, and as a result, even though we've had multiple resistances in series or in parallel, it's been possible to lump these together into an equivalent resistance and do a, a kirchhoff leckin law problem where there's one current that we're solving for passing out of a battery through a, an equivalent resistor and back into the battery. Our next category of problem, though, involves sufficiently complicated multi-loop circuits where more than one current path can be followed and we'll have to employ somewhat more complicated techniques still involving Kirchhoff's laws in order to solve for all the currents in the circuit. Here's an example problem that will ex exemplify what we're talking about. We have a battery hooked up to a set of three resistors, two of which are in parallel, and we may ask what are the currents I1, I2, and I3 shown in the circuit below. First we have to set up as many equations as we can describing the, the current flow throughout the circuit using Kirchhoff's laws. Remember that every loop can give a new equation according to Kirchhoff's second law. All the voltages added up are equal to all the voltage drops subtracted. The first equation that comes to mind here is to notice that there's a junction at the top of the circuit and so that I1 will equal I2 plus I3. That provides a constraint that we'll use later. The second equation comes from drawing a loop or a, a, imagining a loop that passes out of the battery through R1, down through R2, and back to the battery. It's certainly not the only loop through which current can flow, but it's one we can follow. In this loop, if we add all the voltages that add into the circuit, there's just one, that's the battery itself, plus V0. If we subtract all the voltage drops, well, there's a current R, I1 that passes through R1, and so there's a voltage drop I1, R1. There's a current I2 that passes through resistor number 2, and so there's a voltage drop I2, R2. Notice that both voltage drops are subtracted from the initial voltage added. And all of these have to add to zero. There's another equation that can come from drawing a loop all the way around the, perimeter, the outer perimeter of the circuit. That's a completely fine per, uh, loop to draw as well. There's one voltage added in, that's the battery. There's a voltage drop through R1, which is I1, R1. And there's a voltage drop through resistor number 3, which is I3, R3. All of these added together add to zero. This provides three equations with three unknowns. The three unknowns are the three currents. If we're given the voltage and the three resistances, we have enough information to solve these three equations for the three unknown currents. The first step may come if we subtract equations 2 and 3. Subtracting these two equations, will cancel the V0 on, both, on the left-hand side, as well as the I1, R1 terms, because they are both carrying the same sign in the two equations. As a result, we'll have I3, R3 minus I2, R2 equals zero. This can be simplified by moving I2, R2 over to the right-hand side and dividing both sides of the equation by R3, in which case we have I3 is equal to I2 over R2 over R3. This now provides an equation which we can substitute into equation 1. Equation 1 states that I1 equals I2 plus R I3, but we substitute in for I3 and we obtain I2 is, e excuse me, I1 is equal to I2 plus I2 R2 over R3. This can be simplified by factoring out I2 and writing over a common denominator of R3, we find I1 equals I2 times the quantity R2 plus R3 all over R3. We now have a second equation which we can substitute in to one of our other equations. If we go back to equation 2, equation 2 states plus V0 minus I1 R1 minus I2 R2 equals 0. I'm going to substitute in for I1 the expression we just found involving R I2. And I have to multiply that I1 by the R1 of my equation number 2. This can be simplified by factoring out I2 from the last two terms and putting it all over a common denominator of R3. We have plus V0 minus I2 
times this thing in the square brackets. Notice that the first term is unchanged, it's what was there before, and the second term is r2 times r3 over r3, or 1. All of this has to add to 0. We may use this, though, to solve for i2. We move i2 times that big square brackets over to the right-hand side of the equation, and then divide both sides of the equation by the big square brackets. Then we find that i2 is v0 r3 over the sum r2 plus r3 times r1 plus r2 r3. That's a kind of complicated looking expression, but it does solve for i2, a current, in terms of known quantities. So if we knew all these voltages and resistances, we would have a number for i2. Now, we also had an equation before that said i1 could be solved in terms of i2 multiplying by some resistances. So I'm going to use the expression we just found for i2 and solve for i1. As a result, we find i1 equals the sum r2 plus r3 all times v0 over r2 plus r3 times r1 plus r2 r3. Again, kind of a complicated expression, but at least we have it solved in terms of known quantities. Now we have i2 and i3, excuse me, i2 and i1. The only remaining current is i3, but we remember that equation 1 states i3 would be equal to i1 minus i2. If we use our equations for i1 and i2, we find that this means i3 equals v0 r2 over r2 plus r3 times r1 plus r2 r3. Again, kind of complicated, but solved in terms of the known givens. So we've just solved three equations for three unknowns, and we now have expressions for the three currents. These are kind of complicated expressions, and it's useful to check if we might have done all of our arithmetic right. One way to check our arithmetic is to look at some limiting cases and see that our expressions do what we would imagine. What would happen, do you think, if R3 was allowed to go to infinity? That's like saying R3 was a switch that we would open such that it would not allow any current. Well, in this case, I would imagine it would force all the current at the junction to go into R2. In other words, no current would go into R3. If I look at the expression for I2, and set r3 equal to infinity, i2 becomes v0 over r1 plus r2. That makes sense because I just have a battery connected to two resistors in series. It's like r3 doesn't exist. It's an open switch. And that's exactly what I would expect for i2. i1 is the same thing, v0 over r1 plus r2. And if you look at the expression for i3, it becomes approximately 0 when you set r3 to become infinitely large. That also makes sense because there should be no current passing through R th I3. There should be no current passing through R3 if, if it becomes infinitely large. So this limiting case, although very extreme, does make sense in terms of when we look at what happens to our equations. Another ca limiting case would happen if R3 was zero. That's like a shorted out wire across R2. That means that most of the current should not pass through R2 at all. It should pass through R3 altogether. In other words, the battery which was connected to the three resistors will look like it's only connected to two, the two resistors being R1 and R3. It's just a series circuit in this case. If I look at my expression for I2, in the case where R3 is zero, well, what happens to R I2? Well, the R3 in the numerator is going to go to 0, and that becomes 0. If I look at my expression for I3, that's the current through resistor number 3, when I set R3 to 0, it's going to be there and there. And this just becomes V0 over R1. Does that make sense? Well, absolutely, because R3 is gone. It's essentially a short. It's a wire, and no current is passing through R2, so it's now a battery passing through one resistor and coming around this outer loop back to the battery. So I3 should just be V0 over R1. And that just equals the current passing through I1. You could do a similar limiting case if you set R2 to be equal to 0. In that case, all the current passes, bypasses R3. And again, the battery only sees a, current, a resistor R1. These are all examples of games you can play just to make sure that the extraordinary amount of algebra you did
there yields reasonable results when you look at limiting cases of these complicated equations. And I strongly recommend that kind of technique to make sure that you did your arithmetic correctly.